Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 418. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions, uh, or not answer so much as review the questions uh, asked and answered on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have Tim Kepper. Uh, Tim is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com, recently uh, awarded uh, Best uh, Local SEO Agency for Middle Earth. And um, he's based in um, uh, Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Uh, he uh, is a Google product expert uh, in the Google My Business community. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's based in Wimbledon um, and um, he's also a Google product expert on the AdSense uh, community. David Rosam is uh, um, a leading internet marketer. He's based uh, in West Sussex. Uh, uh, actually, is, this, is that the same suburb as Harry and Megan? Uh, um, yes, 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 it is the same Sussex, yes. Uh, okay. All right, let's uh, get into it. Um, we've got, um, uh, let me see. Um, now, what can I do first? I'll try this. Um, P pull the plug out. That's what you've got Hang to on. do. Jim, just pull the plug out. How's that? Does that work? Oh. Does that work for you? Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Um, the um, first question is from Carsten Madsen. Uh, it's titled, What is your position on paid links? Um, in Denmark, where I am from, there is a fairly relaxed attitude towards it, which I generally also share. Uh, in Germany and the US, for example, it seems to be a slightly different climate. Some people see it as a moral. Um, what do you think? And, and do you have experience from different countries? Um, it would be awesome to get some insight. Well, for me personally, um, advertising is, is basically paid. Uh, Google doesn't have a problem with it. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. Um, the question is how those, if it's a link on a website, on how it's treated. And that's when Google looks at it. Um, but apart from that, advertising and paying for advertising is fine. Yeah, and further down, uh, Michael Martinez makes um, good points. Again, paid links as such is not a problem, but um, in the US and other countries, paid links act as endorsements. Or there may be potential conflict of interest. So in those cases, you may have to disclose that potential conflict of interest to your visitors on your site. That might be a legal requirement in certain jurisdictions. So that's something to be, that's something to bear in mind. I see, I see that Carsten uh, said there uh, um, in the comments um, on the, the Facebook group, he said, but it would be interesting if, if Google went out and said, it's all cool with paid links as long as you use sponsored rel and understand that the value is lower than real links. But that's exactly what Google has done. Um, Google has said that, uh, that uh, it's cool to have uh, paid links, providing yep. they, they're expressed that way, and uh, they're, they're not gaming paid, 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 paid drink with it. Yeah, um, I think 
the expression that value is low is perhaps misleading. In you know, it is in the context of um, um, organic links and how Google judges it. But you know, you have links for very various different reasons and for different purposes, and they're going to serve different ends. Um, and I think the most important thing is to ensure that you're honest to the visitor who comes to your site. And that's the case with, I think, paid links, you know, advert endorsements, advertisements, and so on and so forth, in which you have potential conflicts of interest. In those cases, I think you have to make it clear. It's not necessary towards Google, but to the people who visit your site, because it comes down to your credibility. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Dagi. All right, let's um, move on to, uh, let me see. Number two on our run list, it's uh, from Lawrence Wenger. Um, it's titled Migrating Back to a Previous URL. Um, for technical reasons, a website did a migration from the domain.com slash the content to subdomain.thedomain.com slash the uh, content. Um, they did it with a redirection uh, 301. Now that um, the technical constraint was removed, they want to migrate back to the, the domain.com slash the content. Erasing the actual redirection 301 from domain to subdomain and add a redirection from subdomain to domain. Has anyone uh, done something like that before? Uh, will it be a problem uh, with the back and forward of the content and uh, redirections? Any suggestions or recommendations? Thanks a lot for your answer. Kind regards, Lauren Wingard. I see uh, um, people like uh, Brenda Malone uh, who uh, um, answer questions um, relentlessly uh, throughout the week um, and um, they make uh, don't miss your question such a, a valuable resource and, uh, and they make such a valuable contribution. If done properly, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, the only thing that I'd worry is that you, know, you intentionally create a loop something like that. Um, it's not ideal, obviously, because you, you know, it's a bit of a Grand Duke of York situation. You, you know, went one way and then come back again. Um, but if you've set up things properly, then that shouldn't be a problem. No, I, I'd go along with that. But I, I'm, I'm actually wondering why you want to go back again. Um, it's a technical constraint. Um, why can't you leave it at subdomain.thedomain.com forward slash the content and save yourself uh, a lot of heartache? Yeah, and it depends on the sort of time period as well, isn't it? So let's say the domain.com slash the content has been around for a very long time. And then there's something that came up that required this workaround. Mm. Um, for let's say a few weeks or a few months and then that's gone now the constraints gone it wants to go back to the main uh the domain.com slash the content um i can see that because you, you would have a lot of um links pointing to the domain.com slash the content that's what probably is associated with your brand mm -hmm. Yes. but you know if if the gap has been let's say years then yeah i would stick with subdomain dot the domain dot com so i think i think it depends on that partially yeah it depends on time period and how many links are to which set of urls yeah you're right Okay, 
Let's call that a wrap and we'll go to number three on our run list. It's from Faraz Ahmed. Uh, its title is, the title is the same, but the content is different. Um, will it harm my sight? He said, uh, Faraz said, hi, I just checked in Ahrefs 16 to 20 different blogspot sites. I've used images of my article and, and give do follow links uh, to them. The title of each article from which I've got the image backlink is the same, um, but the uh, content uh, is uh, different. Um, what should I do? Are those links considered spammy links? Well, there's there's been a lot going on with there's a lot of uh, scraper sites out there which are using images uh, and you'll probably see that it's the actual link to the image file not to the actual article um google's pretty good at ignoring these um uh, you're pretty good at ignoring these they can obviously also it's an image file um in fact I was looking at this the other day and um, I came across with someone with John Muir on, John Muir on Twitter asking about these and John was like, yeah, um, you know, we, we typically ignore image files um, links to, with links to image files. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Um, if you wanted to leverage these, I, I don't know how you can leverage these because they're not even legit publications where you can actually contact them and say, hey, would you mind attributing me properly for that image? Um, you could try. I doubt you'd ever get a response to the emails. Um, if you want to disavow, go ahead. Um, that's not a problem either. Um, but you know, John Mueller said these are ignored anyway. Um, over the years, Google's got pretty good at ignoring this crap. Um, so I don't, I don't think they're a problem. Um, in fact, I think one of my uh, sites, which is heavily image based, I think the last time I looked, they had something like 210,000 of these things. Um, like if that's, if if that would be enough to, to to ding a manual penalty, then 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 you know it's it hasn't happened yet. The site hasn't ever you know declined in any way, shape, or form. So there's definitely no algorithmic penalty applied. So I can pretty safely say that these are just ignored. Excellent, Jim. All right. Uh, look, I must just also point out Michael Martinez and um, Richard Hearn um, and echoing uh, um, um, your views. Melanie Jane asked the question, it's, it's titled, Can I Build a Web Page Mentioning My Local Competitor? Uh, this is probably a really dumb question, but can I build a, a web page me mentioning my local competitor? The reason I ask is because they have just closed down the office and website and have rebranded going national. So I wanted to snipe some, snipe some local traffic, which has now been displaced, uh, approximately uh, um, 1,300 search volume per month. Uh, I was thinking of going down the compare us to the uh, XXX route, um, but also their old brand name just fits beautifully into any sentence. So it should be easily uh, to create some decent content anyway. Uh, anyone uh, with um, uh, any experience with this, that can help. Um. Yeah, there's no, there's no problem uh, building stuff, mentioning a local competitor. Um, uh, for some of, you know, uh, for the travel, travel market especially, um, 
uh, we produce a lot of content in the sense of, you know, you know, the, the 15 best bars in XYZ location. And of course, literally 14 of those are going to be your competitors. Um, typically don't in those instances actually link to them. But what I do do is link to them to their GMB uh, profile. Um, which then the user can follow through, see see the location. It also makes sense because you're talking about location, um, location to that. But if you wanted to actually link to them, it's not a problem, you know. Um, uh, you know. Um, however, <laughs> if you say something like, like when you say building a web page, if you create something like why why king cabs isn't as good as chester taxis then you could be opening a whole nother can of worms like if you did something if you were thinking of something like that or don't go don't go to jane's cake shop come to bill's cake shop like yeah that's just not cool um, I don't think your customers will appreciate it. You could, I don't know, like, I, I, I don't know what the legal in the UK would be, but yeah, that's, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, that's just crappy. Uh, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. All right, we call that a wrap? Moving on to number five on our run list. It's the uh, uh, it's titled Best Process to Create Backlinks. Uh, and Tyler D asks, what is the best process you've found for creating or collecting backlinks? <laughs> so the best process I've found is just building content on that site that the that 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 suits the user, you know. Um, if people will share it, whether it be socially, um, if it's depending on what it is, if it's a guide, etc. Cetera, etc., cetera, it will build natural mentions. I mean, some of my stuff, like even on my own site, some of the stuff that I never thought anybody would like. You know, it, it was just as a, you know, yeah, th this is what's going on with something. And then, you know, six months later, you happen to be looking in your link profile and you notice, oh, shit, like five people actually referenced this, you know, um, from different sources. And it's just create, you know, if content should be created with the user in mind and it could be all sorts of different things and your content should be, you know, on your site, it can be all sorts of different videos, articles, guides, technical specs. If your audience appreciates it, you know, and other users of that appreciate it, they will link to it. And and that's gen just, you know, then you never have to worry about, oh my God, is this a decent paid link or is this a decent blog post to be? You never have to worry about this stuff. The only thing you've got to worry about is sourcing your writers, getting the decent ad, the ideas for the content, um, stuff like that. And you can actually concentrate just on planning your stuff out, planning your silos, planning your topics, you know, things like this. And you never have to worry about, oh shit, who am I gonna, where am I gonna place this? Da, 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 da. It's ju just concentrate on the site and the niche and the content around that for the users. Yeah, thank you, Tim. All right, let's um, roll on down to number uh, six on our run list uh, from Nathan Bradshaw. Uh, can I add multiple schemas uh, in one page? Uh, Nathan goes on to say, uh, I mean, if I add product FAQ schema and organization schema in, in the same page, um, would there be any issue?
No, uh, a lot of a lot of sites will have. So organization typically will run a cross site, right? Uh, it will typically always run a, a, a cross site. Um, <clears throat> and then on different pages, you'll get different things, you know, like on the about page, they might have person schema on the team things. But of course, organizations running across there, you know, search engines understand, you know, the, the complexity of the site and what's going where. Um, so organization schema on the site, yeah, fair dues, because that's, you know, uh, and then, you know, you've got some FAQs on there. Um, cool. There may be an actual freaking product page. So you may have a product on there, right, with the FAQs. Perfect. It, 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 it's just a natural, you know, you're marking up the particular piece of content that's on there. Search engines understand these. It's not going to cause like a major issue, um, but only mark up what's relevant on the page. So the FAQs, the product, obviously the organization will run across because that's typically in your, you know, um, and yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see a Stockbridge um, Truslow um, has answered and we thank him for his input. All right, let's um, move on to, um, uh, let me see. Um, Dua Fatima, CH Dua Fatima, asked the question, it's titled, how to rank a new article naturally, brackets, without backlinks. Um, and uh, Tim Kepper said uh, on the on the uh, uh, the World Wide Web, uh, on the Facebook group, uh, he said, write it, structure it, publish it. That sounds logical to me. Yeah. You know, it, like, so you've identified, you've, I don't know whether you use Search Console or a tool or whatever, You've identified an area where there's an opportunity. You've still got to write the write the article, write it. You know, so you've identified an opportunity on a particular subject, a topic, a question, whatever it may be. So write it, and then revisit it in the you know put your you know your your SEO little brain on, and then refine it, structure it properly, and then publish it. And that's the only way you're going to like see where where this thing's going. Um, once that's once that's published, you know other other opportunities will appear based off that where you can actually add to it. Or when you're looking at something, you can create a topic around it, and several other pieces of content will naturally flow to it. Those will naturally interlink through these things. You don't need to go out and essentially build link. But also, if you are building something that if you write a piece of content that is, you know, that serves a purpose, that is great. It's going to naturally develop links um, depending on the audience uh, and, and what it was about. But also you can rank for some pretty, some, some you know, some, not just with a single article, but if you're creating a, a, a topical, um, a collection of articles around a subject you could you can rank those based upon just interlinking them correctly through to to give relevance to 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 the main category of of, of that um like you don't need to go and find links just to link to an article that you wrote no thank you too anybody else yeah i think the thing you've got to I, I the thing I, I see people getting mulled up in is they still feel that a blog post has to be 300 words or whatever when you write your before you write your piece you've got to do your your research you've got to find out what you're up against um and it's no good just writing an article um and it's it's also got to be appealing to your to your audience, as Tim has said previously. Um, so just writing about something um, in a in a way that's appealing to you as as a as a company, but not 
to your uh, not to your audience it's not going to get you anywhere um, and you need to see what your your competitors have done if they've written huge great amounts of of content um good quality content you've got to be a little bit more careful in what you decide to write um, certainly in the short term or else you're going to find yourself just grinding away and thinking i'm not getting anywhere um, so do your homework um, before you write it structure it and publish it thank you david okay here we are it's number eight of our run list how to cr increase domain authority naturally um, from ch dua fatima um well I, I i i wouldn't know how to increase domain authority naturally because domain authority is a made up metric by a tool um ask the tool what they um make up this domain authority from and then work on whatever they use to calculate this made up metric see perry bernard said uh, um check with moz on what they say but basically it's about earning links um which you do by being seen as awesome and creating awesome content it's not a google thing Okay, any, any, any more on this one? Okay, we're up to number nine on our run list from, J <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Jayesh, Jayesh Talani. He said, my site got some random backlinks from a website. Um, um, he said, hello everyone, my site got some random backlinks from a website and that website has a 40% spam score. Um, will it affect my website? Please help me, it's serious. Um, I, I said, um, this should not be a curve cause for concern. In general terms, a, a few links should not affect your site one way or the other. Yeah, go along with that, Jim. Um, don't worry about it. Um, it's very unlikely to do any harm at all. Um, I'm always getting rubbish links. Um, maybe that's something yeah. to do with my content. But uh... <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 thing that the thing that um, Jayesh never said is did he click through to the link and actually look at the site, like. I, my own site, online ownership, I think one time I checked, sh shouted in Moz or something, and I mean, I link out to all sorts of things, mention all sorts of dodgy sites and stuff like that, because that's what I'm talking about some of the times, you know. And these tools look at my site and go, holy shit. You, you, you know what I mean? But my site does, 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 does well. It's Look at the actual page. Go to it. Click through to it. Like... Okay, actually, yeah, it's not a brilliant site because it's some. Um, it's just starting out. It's not brilliant. Um, and the reason it's got a spam score, spam score, is because they've written four articles and they've read some really bad stuff about interlinking out to like you know wiki and all this kind of stuff. And of course, the tool you're using probably takes that into account. Like, just have a look at it and 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 see if you're really worried about it disavow it but have a look at it make a judgment yeah good one tim okay let's go to number 10 on our run list from tim o'donnell does google see sidebar slash footer linked articles as a weaker cluster uh, so it, it, it said there's a weaker cluster signal than in-page text links um, using WordPress in case that matters. 
Well, I, I, I'm not really sure what you mean by like a weaker cluster, because your you, you know you, your sidebars for the user, and it's typically the full title as it should be the full title of the article, right? Um, and it'll typically be depending on what, what what the blog's you know structured like. It could be the five most recent articles. Then it could be these are related to this kind of topic, and and it's typically the full title of the article and it's linked to the full thing. It's not like a a thing. So I, I don't understand why it would be viewed as something. You know, it's good for the user. It's good for the user as in what you've recently published, what is related to this particular article or piece of content. Um, it's it's n not necessarily a weaker cluster because, you know, it, it helps the search engines say, oh, oh, look, you know, and actually if it's a new site or something like that, it's, gonna, it's, it's helping it to actually understand um, the content that you have around that particular piece of, you know, whatever it is. Um, but like, I don't understand really well what you mean by a weaker cluster. Um, but yeah, in link, in a, a, a link within an article where you, you know, actually using a bit of a, where you're using a bit of more thoughtful um, uh, anchor text to another article within the site um, probably would have a little bit more of an oomph in the terms of um, using that, that that keyword than than the than the, the full the full title of the article. But it naturally you don't want to be you know having like read here because read here does like same again links with read here does 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 no good for anyone. Excellent, Tim. Okay, yeah, let's um, move on to number 11. Mel Me Mehmet Yilmaz asked the question, uh, he's titled it, Hello guys, I need your help. He goes on to say, I have a client in the snacking industry. They sell trail mixes, uh, dried fruits, etc. Their products are also on Costco's website. When we search for our product, Costco is the first place on search results. We want to build a content strategy um, in, um, oh, sorry, what have I done wrong here? There we are. We want to build a content strategy in order to steal their organic traffic. What can we do? Do you guys suggest anything? Um, thank you all in advance. I would think it's going to be very, very difficult to steal uh, traffic from Costco. You've, you know, you've got the, you've got your brand, but uh, uh, which is something in your, uh, or in your client's uh, favour. But um, Costco has got a bloody great brand. Um, I think it's going to be very, very difficult. I think maybe you've got to chill out and say. Uh, stuff sold through Costco is sales. Okay, you may only get a percentage of a uh, of the margin from it, but uh, um, I think you're if you're looking for you know quick-ish uh, solutions, you're going to be very very difficult to to edge them out. Um, so. So, uh, is this what you're trying to say? So, like, call it, they make yummy gummies, right? And when somebody searches for yummy gummies, uh, their product, yummy gummies at Costco, appears uh, for a couple of positions, yeah? Before their yummygummy.com site, right? Is that what he's saying? Yeah. 
Right. Um, I think so. Well, essentially, look, I think you should be, uh, look, it's going to be tough because what you're looking at, and but essentially, Costco should only have one page on their site for your yummy gummies. Unless, I don't know, I mean, you haven't given us much info, unless your yummy gummies also does 57 other different kinds of products, right, within that yummy gummy range. And it's all of those that Costco has. So then they have like a larger thing. But essentially, if Costco has one freaking yummy gummy page on their site, you should be able to take that. Although, you, you, you know, you, you um, although, of course, it, you know, it's going to take a bit of time. But so essentially, right. So I would be looking at your site. I would look at stuff like. Um, oh, and the other thing is, make sure does Costco freaking link to you? Like, what's the deal with your with your distributor thing? Blah blah blah. You know, find out like find out what the crack is, like what the deal is with the company. Because hey, if you know Costco can link to you from their supplier page, awesome. Uh, the other thing uh, then to start looking at is look at your site. So essentially, if it's one page on Costco, Co Costco is using the 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 weight of their domain as in the understanding of a user when they search yummy gummy and not with like buy or nearest or where can i just the actual brand name um um so they're using that or, or it's just naturally there uh, you need to look at your site because then it's you know like you know as a brand look at things on your site um you should yeah you know you can definitely you can definitely um you want to start getting a lot more brand branded queries to your site i don't know you know start thinking of things like um ugh, you know you've got to start being clever on, on how to get more branded people into your thing whether it be social media i don't know create little cute yummy gummies with freaking like I've been vaccinated stickers or bullshit like that. Um, competitions, yummy gummy competitions, like little microsite where people can chase the yummy gummy around. Like, you know, you, you, you need, you need to be building your brand so that you're getting, so when somebody searches yummy gummy, Google goes, he wants to see the freaking yummy gummy dot com not the Costco page. We'll put Costco on position two in case they want to buy it, okay? Um, so that's what you need to start thinking about. You need to be building a brand so that Google understands that when somebody searches Yummy Gummy, they want to see Yummy Gummy and not Costco because at the minute, Google understands that when somebody searches Yummy Gummy, all they want is to purchase it. They don't actually want to go into the site to engage. They don't want to go into the site to maybe look at the latest news, the latest um, yummy gummy clip on YouTube. Y you see what I mean? Like um, stuff like this. So, you know, you need to put your heads on. You know, this 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 is really also a bit of a marketing and branding uh, thing rather than um, just like, hey, how can we beat, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think one thing that is unclear to me from the question is what does the client want to do? Do they actually want to sell on their site? I, you know, bypass a retailer by selling directly to the customer, or do they just want to rank for the product name for the sake of it? Yeah, I, I, from the sound of it, he hasn't said that, but from the sound of it, I think it's more vanity. You know, when the the the, the, the board sits down and goes, we don't even rank for, rank for our own brand. Like, forget the fact that the main distributor their main income actually comes from Costco. <laughs> um, but the point is, if you want people to come to you because you you want to, it's your brand and a vanity thing, then make it for that people come to you. Like they want to need to come to you. They're not going to come to your site, like position one, and then leave you to then go to fucking Costco. Oh shit, Jim, oh God. I just swore twice in a row there, J Jim's, J oh, sorry, Jim, you're going to have to edit, mate. Niggas, they're doing all right to this label. Yeah, I, I, th I think, you know, what Tim says is is right. And as I said, 
it, it's it's not going to be immediate. And I think the other thing that Tim said is that's absolutely correct is, is that your client needs to be very, very clear about why they want to be there. Um, if it's vanity and it's not being, there's nothing being sold from the site because everything goes out through a distributor channel somehow, then um, there's possibly not a lot of uh, advantage to have people come to your site. Uh, you want them to go somewhere where they can buy the stuff. Um, yeah, there's there's more questions to be asked, I think. Yeah, and yeah, and, and, and like going off David there, exactly, like if they come to your site and can't purchase it, yeah, like you probably won't sell individual packs, like Costco will individual packs, right? um where you want to sell in bulk so you need you know you need to really look at that um but if you starting to make it as a brand that people want to come in and find out the latest recipe because you've made a new yummy gummy cocktail like hey guys it's summer he has the latest yummy gummy cocktail oh and by the way you've still got to go to costco to buy our yummy gummies that's not a problem, but you're creating a brand and an awareness. Like at the minute, you're literally not providing anything in that sense. You need to do that if you want to create that brand to overtake the other, you know, the other people. You need to create that brand affinity where people want to come to you and not just continually leaving to go to Costco to buy their one thing, which you may not offer in the first instance because you probably want to sell in the hundreds of thousands rather than a single individual packet. I don't know. Like, we need more info. Yeah, well, um, in the, the comments on the site, uh, uh, Mehmet uh, came back and said, uh, um, he said it's the client that wants it. We're, he, he said uh, he thinks we're already in in fifth place while, while Costco is in first um, so yeah, Mehmet knows what's going on. It, it's 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 the client's vanity that uh, we have to um, appease. Well, uh, yeah, then Mehmet needs to explain to them that you know you, we need to bring people here as a brand, like you know just just freaking Google Nike and go and look at Nike. You don't just get shoes; you get stories. You get yeah blah 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 blah, 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 blah. life stories gotta you know like you need to create the story of the yummy gummy and you need you know you need to create nice little images you need to create the oh what can you do with yummy gummies in winter what can you do with yummy gummies in spring um look at the latest uh black lives matter yummy gummy you know you know you need to become that kind of brand you need to like if you want to get, go, go down that road as a vanity thing you need you know you just say to the client and why would someone click on you like why what would they do and then once they go uh, and then then they, you start explaining to them that you need to create something as a brand for them yeah all right uh, rolling on to number 12 when i run this it's titled what else do we need to do demetrius maddox said that we are ready to point our real domain to our newly redesigned site that has a, a temp temporary url right now so i've gone through the old website site map and i have a list of where i will 301 redirect the urls to on the new site and um after uh, we point the main URL to the redesigned site and set up the 301s and submit a new site map to Google Search Console, what else do we need to do? Don't fight over it. I, I wouldn't fight. I, I'm a, a man of peace. I am. Um, I, I've uh, I've got my my band the bomb T-shirt somewhere. Mm. Um, <laughs> I, 
go through this very carefully again. Make sure you've got all of those 301 redirects uh, properly implemented. Um, and then do it. <laughs> um, oh, my Lord. You can tell you've just come back from two weeks of holiday. But hey, man, I'm just like, don't fight over it. I'm a man of peace. God damn it. <laughs> Master, we need a holiday to become as chilled out as that. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. God, can somebody please stress this out? Okay, I'll shut up. I'm going to go back and be chill. I'm not going I'm to be excited like Tim. <laughs> No, I'm going to phone your wife and say, do something, taser him, stress him out. <laughs> she doesn't need to taser me to stress me out. Come on, <laughs> she's my wife. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Was it, that must have been a good two weeks. She's my life. <laughs> we'll have none of that talk on you. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, yeah, what was, the, what was the question anyway? Sorry, Demetrius. Yeah, I mean, it sounds probably more complicated than it actually is, how he phrased the question. So it seems that he had... Um, so well-established domain, I suppose, and then also a temp site, so a dev or staging site on another domain. And now he's no. That's not, that that doesn't make sense. Uh, I'm talking rubbish. Um, anyway, um, if the redirects have been done properly, then there shouldn't be anything to worry about as such. So the thing to do is to monitor um, for any four falls or um, redirects. Um, especially redirect, redirect loops that can occur when you, you know, try to redirect many things at the same time. So that would be what I would do. Thank you, Mesa. All right, uh, I think we've hit that time uh, i think we've um, yes it is thank you for watching time we've answered um, all of the, the questions asked and answered uh, on the dumb seo questions facebook group um, we'll be back at the same time next week but before we go i i, I must thank uh, you guys first off uh, masataki uh, tim uh, david rosam uh, thank, thank you for your contributions and also the, the, the people who answer questions through the week and, and make Damasio questions such a, a valuable resource. Um, I'm, I'm meaning, I'm referring to Michael Martinez, Michael Stricker, um, Brendan Malone, um, so many uh, people. Um, I just can't think of them all right now. Anyway, we'll be back at the same time this uh, the, the next next week. And thank you very much.